The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to Mystery and Tragedy. And the one redeeming feature of disaster. It seems to bring out the best in the survivors. It all began, or did it end, with the reunion of an old lady and the last of her relatives, a granddaughter she hadn't seen since childhood. The place? Stratfield's busiest department store, Mayberry's. The time? 13 minutes after 1 o'clock. If you're superstitious, you could read that in Army or European time. 1313. By coincidence, that's when it happened. to my back. Oh, it was so terrible to find you and lose you again, Charity. Don't, don't, don't call me that. Why not? Because you can't see me. You can't tell who I am. But you know who you are, don't you? It's the whole trouble. Ever since I got hit, I don't know who or what I am. mystery drama, Charity is Never Dead, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Virginia Payne and Rosemary Rice. It is sponsored in part by imported Vina Rosé wine and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Half an hour after the accident at the department store, Stratford Community Hospital is a temporary shambles. The constant arrival of ambulances, the whoop whoop of police sirens, the hysteria of the less badly hurt, the moan of the burned, the hustle and bustle of doctors and nurses competently handling the emergency are a background to a quick meeting between Dr. Mark Banning, chief of staff, and the hospital chaplain, Dan Walters. Many injured, Doctor? Enough, and too many killed. Till phone service is restored, we won't know how many. Uh, excuse me, Dan, there? Expect upwards of a hundred casualties. Refer all ambulance to Dr. Fleming. Free up for the staff lounge. The ready room in the corridors are jammed already. It's all for now. Yes, sir, sir. Hope we won't need you, Dan, but I'm afraid we're going to. The minister not only offers solace to the dying, but prayer and comfort to the living. Of course. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... The phone. Thank heaven communication again. You want to get it, Dan? Yeah. I'm carrying in someone who looks like emergency. I do. Dan. Am I glad to see you. First order, Are you all right? Don't worry about me. But you were going shopping at Mayberry's this morning. Well, I couldn't find the right thing there for Mother's birthday, so luckily I was a few stores away when the explosion went off. I know what caused it. A new boiler. Improper installation. Pressure backed up somehow and blew Mayberry's ground floor to ribbon. Thank heaven you weren't there. Well, thank heaven I was near enough to be of help. But I... Oh, I appreciate your concern, Mark. I, uh... Mm-hmm. Well, I ought to be concentrating more on uh, patients. Uh, what have you got there? Uh, 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 Mrs. Chandler. Flat mm-hmm. fur in both eyes. I don't know how serious. Uh, also, she was hit by a heavy beam falling. Mm-hmm. Back. Broken? Uh, Possibly. But it's more complicated than that. Mm-hmm. Possible renal failure. I'm sure both kidneys are crushed. Charity. I've got to go back to the store. I... 
find my granddaughter. That's all I have. Please, please. We'll, we'll, we'll find her, Mrs. Sandler. She was there. I talked to her. Where is she? You rest, dear. Who is that? Who are you? Dr. Logan. Dr. Ann Logan. Oh. Now you rest and you'll take care of her. Sure, see? Please. I need charity. We'll leave you in here any longer, Mark. I'm going to run a check on conditions in general. Oh? Can I help you? I... I, I don't know. Who were you looking for? I don't really know. Somebody? Uh, anybody? No. No, somebody. How did you get up on this floor? Is that here? Oh, well, the stairs. I was looking for... I, I thought I might find... Somebody who belonged to me. Were you in the explosion at the store? Was I? Try to remember. Did the police bring you here to the hospital? Yes. The ambulance took the old lady, and I came in the squad car. Were you hurt? Oh, oh just my head, a bump. Uh oh, let me see. Did, did anyone examine you? Well, an intern looked at me and asked me to wait. Only, only I couldn't, you see. Why not? Well, because I, I had to find somebody. I, I didn't remember who or where to begin, except with, with, with this. Well, what is it? Just a piece of paper, like from a phone pad with a number. 380. Oh. What do you think it means? Uh, a room, maybe? There's no such room number in this hospital. Oh, I thought maybe it might... Might be the old lady. What old lady? Well, just someone I met after. What was it before? I don't know. What was the old lady's name? I. I don't know. What is your name then? But that's the whole trouble, don't you see? I don't know that either. When you were examined, didn't they ask your name? Yes. And? I didn't have a name to give them. I thought if I just sat still for a while, the shock would wear off. And I don't worry. It'll all come back. I'm Dr. Logan, and I'll see you a little later. You have amnesia. You'll have to have a thorough examination to make sure there's no concussion. Well, I, I, I really thought I was all right. But I, I guess I, I'm not. You'll find out why and fix it. <laughs> How is your patient now? Not too good. How's the situation outside? Not too bad. Everything under control, more or less. One of the rough days, though, for all of us. And for Mrs. Chandler here. This is an unlucky room. Just lost a patient in the other bed. Are you going to lose Mrs. Chandler? Oh, we're waiting on the BUN, some other tests. I don't think she's operable. Have her under heavy sedation now. Doubt she can last more than a few days. Mm. Sweet old girl. Pity. How's your life? Hmm? Tolerable. Until I can get you to think at least the same with me. A pity? No. Sweet old girl. Uh, you can drop the oh, old. Oh, come on, Anne. Now, you know my philosophy. Doctors don't mess around with lady doctors. We're exposed to enough communicable diseases as it is. It isn't my degree you're afraid of, Doctor. It's my sex. Mm -hmm. Once bitten... Mm -hmm. She's also now successfully divorced and remarried. Uh, this is hardly the time for personal problems. I'd uh, better check on how the rest of it's going. Well, you can start with a patient I have outside. An amnesia case I found wandering around the hall. Retro? Anterograde? Retro. No memory of anything before the accident. Any physical injuries? Well, I haven't had a real chance to examine her. Supposedly, she was checked when she was brought in. Yeah, and all the commotion, you can't be sure. Bring her in here. Let's examine her here. I'll be able to manage once I pull this curtain. All the examination and treatment rooms are jammed anyway. I'll go get her. Charity. Charity. Mrs. Chandler, try to rest. 
I lost my friend. Oh, I know you do, and I... we're trying to find her for you. Oh, you must. Finally, after all these years. I don't need to help you. Oh, Mr. Help me. I'm not fine. Help me. 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 This is Dr. Browning, our chief of staff. Oh, how do you do, Dr. Because after the explosion, I helped an old lady, and she thought I was her granddaughter. She called me Charity. Are you? I don't know. This is the girl with the amnesia. I told you about Dr. Browning. Well, is your grandmother's name Chandler by any chance? Is that the ring a bell? No. Would you recognize Mrs. Chandler if you saw her? I, I don't think so. No, I mean the old lady you helped after the accident. Oh, oh yes, I would know her. I, I think I would. Now, let's try quietly. She's deeply sedated now, and I don't want to wake her. Can, can you walk all right? Oh, oh sure. All right, you can pull back the curtain, Dr. Logan. Uh, of course, Doc. Well? Yes. Yes, that's the old lady I helped in the store. Well, is she your grandmother? Do you remember her? I can't remember anything before that bomb went off. How do you expect me to remember her? Now cross your left leg over your right, please. Oh. <laughs> There's nothing the matter with that, please, right? <laughs> Look up, please. Like, like that? Just have to find out what's causing it and cure the cause. But nothing caused it. Nothing really happened. Look to the right. How about the bump on your head? Oh, I've had worse. But how do you know nothing happened? The left, please. What do you mean? If you don't remember. But I do. Right back to the explosion. Look down, please. <laughs> and uh, after that? Oh, just that it was awful. Something knocked me down. I... Uh, that's when you got the bump. I guess. What were you doing in Maybury store? I, I, I don't remember. Hmm. Remember what happened to your pocketbook? Pocketbook. I must have lost it. I... In the store? I suppose. I mean, I'm not even sure I had one to begin with. Yes. Uh, no, Dr. Logan. I, I see no signs of neurological damage either. But I want a skull series. So we'll keep her. Uh, Miss Chandler? No, she's still under. I just arranged to have our uh, Mr. Guest admitted. You can keep me here in the hospital? Yeah, until you remember. Or we find out. We, uh, we stay right in this room. I'll send a nurse in to help you. With an old lady who's dying? You're lucky the bed's available. And when you get into it, stay put, young lady. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Mrs. Candle. Mm. Mrs. Chandler, are, are you all right? Charity, I, I, I want charity. I'll, I'll get a doctor. No, no. Give me your hand. Don't you know that all I want is you, dear? Just hold my hand, Charity. Oh. Doctor. No, no. Give me your hand. Don't you know that all I want is you, dear. Just hold my hand, Charity. Oh, that's all I need to ask. Sure, if you want me to. I had the most awful dream, Charity. I thought I'd lost you again. But now it's all right. Oh, oh why is it so dark? Where are we? In the hospital. What are we doing in... The... Oh. oh. Oh, of course. That awful explosion. Are you all right, Charity? Me? I'm, I'm fine. But your eyes are all damaged. You can't see me. Maybe I'm not Charity. And you're making a mistake. Oh, don't be silly, my dear child. Don't you think I know my own granddaughter? Oh. 
In the bed, the old lady, her eyes bandaged, lies breathing quietly, holding the girl's hand. Debbie's face, watching her, is a kaleidoscope of emotions. Hard to read. Hope, fear, disbelief, or just simple prayer for a way out of a maze of bewilderment. We certainly won't even begin to know the answer to any of these questions, at least until I return shortly with Act Two. By the end of the afternoon, the chaos that once was the main floor of Maybury's store has been partially restored. The police and fire departments have made their reports and an army of workmen are busy boarding up windows and beginning repairs. The emergency is over. Except for what human misery it has left in its trail. Now, Reverend Dan Walters has made a personal trip to the store, to the police, and to fire headquarters to collate all the information and bring it to Dr. Mark Banning. A hundred and fifty-one casualties, all told. Everyone accounted for? With two exceptions. There's no trace of Mrs. Chandler's granddaughter, and no idea or clue who the girl with amnesia is. Unless she is gay. That's right. How old was the granddaughter? According to neighbors, the police contacted somewhere in her middle 20s. Uh, any pictures? Yeah, quite a few, all taken over 10 years ago. Mrs. Chandler hadn't seen her granddaughter since she was in her early teens. The mother married a pretty rough guy named Whitman. I don't know what went on, but... The kid spent quite a bit of time in a wayward girl's school. When she got out, the father had taken off. And I get it, the mother was pretty sick, maybe on drugs. Charity took care of her. Well, what did Miss Amnesia look like in the snaps you saw? She did herself. Pretty, fair complexion, light hair. And in these two color prints, her eyes looked brown. Dan, hey, why do you question her identity? I mean, do you think it's just some wild coincidence? I'm not much of a believer in coincidences, Mark. I'd rather go with you and accept charity at face value. <laughs> the Lord makes a lot of plans. In one way or another, he just may have blueprinted this one. I just don't understand you, Anne. I mean, you think she's faking? I don't know. But why no pocketbook? any form of identification. And why, no matter what the occasion, meeting her grandmother after all these years, no recognition. Most of all, I guess I... I don't think the girl herself believes she's charity. Well, Dan thinks after talking to her earlier, she's ready to accept that fact. Chaplain Walters, Charity. May I come in? Of course. Yeah, I see you're comfortably set. Well, set anyway. Dr. Banning has told me how kind you've been to your grandmother. Don't say that. Oh, why not? Aren't you her granddaughter? I, I don't know. She says I am. I wish I could be sure. Right now, I... I'm just sorry for her. How do you feel? Miserable. And afraid. Why can't I remember who I am, Chaplain? Perhaps you don't want to remember. Have they... Have they located her granddaughter yet? No. Everyone apparently accounted for. No sign of her. Do you think if it isn't me, that it might have been someone who died in the explosion? Well, that's about the way it stacks up. We should know by morning. Now I'll say goodnight. I... Hope you are, Charity. You could make her last days very happy if you bring her truth and love. Good night. Charity, are you there? Yes. Yes. Oh, are we alone? Yes. I, I thought I heard you talking to one of the doctors. No, just to the chaplain. Were you talking about me? Sort of. Oh, yeah. Have you talked to the doctors about me? Well, not really. About I... whether I would ever see again? Well, it's too soon for them to say. No, Charity, dear. They know. 
Just as I know. I won't ever see again. How can you be sure? Because I won't live long enough. They know that too. But I'm not afraid of death. Not anymore, Charlie, with you beside me safe and sound. Well, here I am. <sighs> Promise you'll stay with me. It won't be for too long. And I promise, in return, you'll never be sorry. Like a banning, yes. Who? Captain Walters? Well, sure, send him in. Oh, and uh, nurse, uh, uh, put a page on Dr. Logan if she's in the hospital. Ask her to come to my office. Hi, Dan. Find a perch. Well, what's on your mind? I spent most of the night at Mayberry. I didn't find anything at the fire sale that did anything for me, but I turned up some evidence like this. Pocketbook with a wallet inside it. And inside the wallet, this picture. Hmm. Well, that, that's Mrs. Chandler. So this must belong to her granddaughter. There's additional evidence. You remember her granddaughter came in by bus yesterday at 1. Proof? Item? One ticket stub made out to a charity Whitman. So our Miss Amnesia must have dropped her pocket book in the excitement. Well, we're out of the woods. She is charity. That would make it all so nice and simple, Mark, but it just doesn't wash. The bag with the wallet in it was clutched in the hand of a young woman they just dug out dead in the debris. I'm afraid Charity Chandler is dead. Oh, what rot luck. I mean, Mark, Dan, I, I just came down from the room. Mrs. Chandler has no more chance at living than she had when she was brought in. We have her on hemodialysis now, but that's only supportive. But in spite of it all, she's so happy to be reunited with her granddaughter that... But it means so much to her. What about the girl? She calls her grandma now. Are you sure that there isn't some possibility? I doubt it, Dr. Logan. The girl and the purse were one. So we still don't know who our amnesia victim is. And worse than that, we have to break the news to Mrs. Chandler that her granddaughter is dead. What choice do we have? It'll kill that old woman. She is in no condition to stand a shock like that. She's entitled to die with a little dignity and happiness. Must she be told? Oh, there's more than one person involved in this. Our amnesiac has the right to know who she is not before she can remember who she is. She has to be told that she is not charity. But she doesn't necessarily have to tell Mrs. Chandler that. Well, how could we ask the girl to keep that secret? I mean, under the circumstances. Well, it isn't reasonable. You're right. Unless... Unless what? Unless we talk to her. We might be able to persuade her to keep up the, the pretense long enough to... To what? To allow a very sweet old lady to die in peace. Well? You wanted to see me, Chaplain? Yes. Forgive me for not coming up to your room. No, no, I'll, I'll close the door. Hello, Dr. Logan. Won't you sit down? I uh, hope I won't be awake too long. I, I don't like leaving Grandma alone. Grandma? Yes. I've made up my mind. Or rather, she has for me. That you are Charity Whitman? If I'm not, then you tell me who else I am. I'm sorry. I wish I could. But I can't. But you don't think that I'm charity. Is that what you want to see me about? Dan, tell her what you found out. The police have found a young woman who is. The real charity Whitman? All the evidence points to it. Oh, and that makes me nobody again. Where is she? Dead. Killed in the explosion. It, it, it's all right. Go ahead. Cry. Oh, not for myself. Only for that dear old lady upstairs. I'm sorry. I, uh, 
I didn't mean to go to pieces. No, you didn't. <laughs> and I lied some. It is for Mrs. Chandler. But it's for me, too. <laughs> you, you see, I, I, I actually was beginning to think I, I really was Charity. Well, that's because you wanted so much to be somebody again. It's so awful to have no roots and, and no memories to live in a vacuum. To feel so alone. Well, there's always someone worse off. Think of Mrs. Chandler. How alone she'll be when she learns the truth. Well, you're not going to tell her. What else can we do? You'll break her heart. You'll kill her. Under the circumstances, we can't ask you to keep on pretending. Why not? If she still thinks I'm Charity, at least she'd have a few days of happiness left. Do you think you could bring it off? Why not? I've done it so far. Because you thought you might be. No, it's deliberate deception. And I'm not sure that Dr. Banning would agree to it. Why wouldn't he? Hmm? Many reasons. One is, you might remember any moment who you really are, my dear. You. My dear. It's a terrible thing not to have a name to be called by. And it could be my name. And if I have another, maybe there's a reason enough that I want to forget it. Oh, oh I've got to get some air. Are you all right? Oh, sure. Happy as a clam. Well, maybe we better get you back up to bed. <laughs> Dr. Logan, I'm all right physically. The trouble with me is in my head. I... What is it? For a moment, I had nothing, nothing, just, I've made up my mind, and I don't care what any of you say, for her sake, for my sake, from now on, you'd better all just call me Charity. <laughs> Again, we are left tantalizingly on the horns of a dilemma. Was there something about that plane that jogged a girl's memory? Is her decision to become Charity Whitman an altruistic one? Or has she some deeper motives than kindness and compassion? Who is this girl who doesn't know herself? Or does she? And only wants to hide her real identity? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. This is WBBM in Chicago. It's another day, scrubbed bright with clean sunlight. A day for surfing or sailing or climbing a gentle mountain. Or just lying lazily in a field and watching the sky. For most people, that is. For the five people in our story... And in Stratfield Community Hospital, it's to be a very different day. A day of sadness, suspicion, and dilemma. Mrs. Chandler is mercifully asleep. Death not very far away now. Charity and the chaplain are walking in the hospital gardens. And Doctors Logan and Banning are huddled in a corner of the cafeteria over morning coffee. Poor Mark. You look so tired this morning. I'm not tired, Anne. I'm worried. About what? Well, about this deception I've agreed to. Our business is healing, not playing with human emotions. <laughs> you make it sound as though I've been party to something... something cruel. Well, no, I, I'm not questioning your motives. Or just whether any of us have any right to contribute to deceiving a dying woman. Just? to give her what happiness we can? Even though she barely knew her granddaughter, it's, it's obvious she was or is now the center of her life. Yeah, there's no doubt of that. Then, since she's convinced the girl is charity, whatever doubts we have, who are we to question that? Well, damn it, I am chief of staff of this hospital. I'm sticking my neck out. There could be legalities involved. What? Well, for one thing... Mrs. Chandler may have a will. If it names Charity as beneficiary and the girl died in the explosion, she might want to change it. She should have that right. I never thought of that. But wouldn't it just go to the, to the next of kin? <laughs> According to the hospital records, there is no next of kin. Which may be why our so-called Charity is so willing to decide that's really her name. It is, it is possible... 
to fake amnesia, you know. And if there's enough money involved? Oh, I don't believe that girl could do anything like that. She... What is it? I was just thinking. Yesterday, while Dan and I were talking to her, she was by the window and she stopped suddenly as if... As if she'd remembered who she really was? Yes. I thought she was coming out of it and then... Then she turned on us and told us that from now on, as far as she was concerned, we could take her for Charity Whitman. Oh, Mark, I want to believe in her. Don't let this turn out wrong. Good morning, Charity. Oh, hello, Dr. Logan. <sighs> Isn't it lovely out here? <laughs> I hate to leave the sun, but I should get back in case Grandma's awake. Oh, she can wait a moment. It's your grandmother I want to talk about. Well, she hasn't... Oh, no, I checked on her before I came out. She's resting very peacefully. She has nothing to worry about for the moment. But I do. You? Who are you? And this time, I want an honest answer. And this time, I'll give you the only answer I can give you from now on. I am Charity Whit... What are you listening to? The plane. You did that before. Does it remind you of something? Yes. But I... I can't quite... Remember that crumpled piece of paper you had with the number 380? Could that have been a flight number? Yes. Perhaps. Was it a flight you were on? No. When you were going to take? Yes. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. Were you going with someone? Yes, I... I I think maybe I was, but I... Who? Who? Uh, Who were you going with? Oh, isn't this awful? I don't remember. Oh, I was so close. No. No, I'm so tired. That's enough for now. Just one more question. All right. What's your name? Deborah. Debbie Scott. <gasps> oh, my God. What did I say? I think you just told me who you really are. Chaplain. Chaplain, excuse me for bursting in like this, but I need your help. Any I can offer. What? But it's, 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 it's all come back. I know who I am. Yes. Dr. Logan informed me. You're Deborah Scott. We're trying to trace now oh, where... You didn't listen to me. I haven't told Dr. Logan everything. I, I wanted to talk to you first. I, I... I have some problems. As for example? This afternoon at 3 o'clock, I'm supposed to fly to Mexico City with the man I love. Oh, that isn't a problem. That's happiness. I'm sure there'll be no trouble about the hospital releasing you in time to catch your plane. Yes, but then what happens to Mrs. Chandler? What you've already done for her has been wonderful. No one can expect you to give up your personal life now that you've refound it. Does your fiancé know you're all right? Oh, he's had no way to know that anything was wrong. You see, his insurance company transferred him to New York. I, I, I thought you said you were headed for Mexico City. We are. Look. You see, I, I was his secretary. The firm closed the local office where we worked, and Dan flew ahead to New York, and he's probably been trying to get in touch with me, and I don't know where he is. Didn't you call him at the firm? Well, he, he'd already left. He'll be expecting me to leave with him from here on his two-week vacation. Your honeymoon, then you have to meet him. I don't want to run out on Mrs. Chandler. Not, not when she depends on me. Well, maybe if you talk to your young man, he might... Delay the vacation a few days. Mrs. Chandler hasn't got any longer than that. I don't know if he would. It's been his last vacation for a long time, and he'd probably just go on without me. Without the girl he's going to marry? I didn't say we were going to be married. Oh. Look, my only chance, really, is if, if I do go with him. But I know him. If I don't turn up at that plane, I'll never see him again. And I love him. How much does he love you? Granted what you say. Look, 
There's been very little love in my life, Chaplain. I was an orphan, brought up in foster homes. But I'm not her charity. I'm Debbie Scott. I know what I'm trying to do for Mrs. Chandler is right. And I guess what I'm doing with Vince is wrong. But I can't be two people. Which am I supposed to be? That you, Charity? <laughs> yes, Grandma. Where have you been? Oh, well, they were just giving me a checkup. They're going to send you home. <laughs> yes, they they need the bed. <laughs> I'm I'm all right now. Oh, that's wonderful, dear. I'm so happy for you. No more clouds or doubt, hmm? No. You know who you are again. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll miss not having you right here in the room with me. <laughs> and I'll miss not being here with you. Hmm. Darling. Yes. Come to me closer just for a moment, please. I'm here. Just do one thing for me. Anything you want. Just give me a long hug and say, Grandma. Grandma. That's all. Just Grandma. <laughs> That's all I really wanted to hear. Grandma. <laughs> Oh, my dear little girl that I know so little about. All the years of, of not knowing you. And such a little time to, 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 to catch up. Funny, isn't it? Two days together in a hospital. And in one way I know everything about you. And in another nothing at all. Now, tell me. Tell me about yourself. Oh, there's nothing really to tell. Oh, of course, there is. Every young girl has so much to tell. Her hopes, her dreams, what she asks of life. And you remember, I'll be watching you from somewhere. And just maybe I, I, I can repay you and make it all come true. Oh, how I wish you could. Well, then you tell me, and I'll try. Let's begin with what every girl wants in her life. A man. Isn't there one in yours? Well, I... I don't know why I blurted it all out. Because I asked. It was important. But he... Uh, he doesn't love you enough to ask you to be his wife? Oh, he does. He asked me to be... Well, when, when was that? Oh, oh, uh, a long time ago. I, I don't think that it was... I think it's still going on. Why don't you give him another chance? Grandma... Grandma. It's been good to hear you call me that. Now, I want the chaplain. But first, say goodbye. No. No, no, I can't. Of course you can. I only wish that I could ever thank you enough. For what? Everything, my dear. God took my eyes away, but he gave me you instead. I'll never forget you. Goodbye. Whoever you are, or will come to be, uh, now get me the chaplain. So your young man decided to wait for you? Yes. Does that mean... Yes. We'll be married in Mexico. <laughs> Lucky girl. Would it be... Do you mind if I wish you the same luck? Me? <laughs> Why should I try to fool another woman? I'm afraid I won't be so lucky. 
Mark? She's gone. Very quietly and without any pain. Oh, no. <laughs> How silly. I've just grown to think of her that way. She's the only real relation I ever had. You may be the closest one she had. What do you mean, Chaplin? I'll read your letter she dictated to me before she died. It's about you. I have never thought much about death, save that when it came, I would not have to meet it alone. And I didn't, thanks to a beloved girl to whom I owe more than I can ever repay. I have nothing much worth leaving in this world's goods except this ring, the one I was wed with, the charity's mother was wed with. And that now I want to give to the girl who gave me my last days of peace, who shared my final hours. I hope she wears it soon, proudly and happily, with my love and her own. She meant you, Debbie. No. She meant her granddaughter. There's nothing on the paper that says so. That's strange. You know, the last time I talked to her, she never once called me charity. Do you think she knew? It doesn't matter. This ring was meant for Debbie Scott. And when you wear it, remember to wear it with charity, in the biblical sense. Good luck, Debbie. You have every chance. There'll be someone smiling down on you every step of the way. Did Mrs. Chandler know that Debbie Scott was not her granddaughter? Did she prefer to play out a last sweet charade to make death come softer? We'll never know. But that chance, perhaps foolish and old-fashioned name, given to a girl long ago, proved in the end to live up to its old-fashioned meaning. I'll be back shortly. This is the Mystery Theater. And after all, what greater mystery in the world is there than love. So just as a footnote, not long after, Vince and Debbie married in Mexico City. Dr. Mark Banning managed to forget a first unfortunate marriage and marry Dr. Ann Logan. And Dr. Logan, since time was running by, decided to have a child. Actually, they both hope for a boy, but if it happens to be a girl... I wonder if they'll be tempted to call her Charity. Our cast included Virginia Payne, Rosemary Rice, William Prince, Patricia Wheel, and George Petrie. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. It is the decision of this court's marshal... That murder has been done. And one of you must pay the penalty with your life before a firing squad. I ask once more in the name of God and of your honor as a soldier that the guilty one confess and not have two murders on his conscience. I did not do it. Rudy, how can you... Would you make your sister a widow to save your own life? I did not fire the shot. Very well. The Scots Marshal hereby pronounces the death sentence. The fate of the man to die will be settled by a roll of the dice. Low man will lose. God, take him away. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12 hour cold capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our Mystery Theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time. Pleasant
The midway temperature is 28 degrees. WBBM News Time 1124.